I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better. And something that's been on my mind for the past couple of days is how is it that Konami could make Yu-Gi-Oh easier for new players, easier to understand? Because I feel like ever since that video I made the other day that that's something that Konami's really focusing on. So let's dive on into it, shall we? I know I probably still sound a little bit congested, but I promise you I'm feeling a lot better. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your host with the most, AVLR32 here. Destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder. Currently sitting at 1,244 subscribers. I came and say that sounding even remotely sensible of a sentence because my body and mind are just all over the place trying to feel better, but I'm feeling a lot better. I really appreciate all of the support. So. I've been thinking about all of the things that are part of Yu-Gi-Oh! now in 2023. And ever since I made that video talking about uh, how Konami is focusing on banless changes and changing the game itself to get new players into the game, especially those that were on Master Shits, getting them into the game that, for actual paper play. And so I've been trying to think about things that Konami can do to really push that forward and to get new players into the game. Now, I by no means want to see things radically change. I'm not saying that these things are necessarily be healthy. It's just that these are cards that could come off the ban list, I feel, and changes to the game as a whole that could make new players want to get into the game. So starting off here, I know that this is going to sound a bit wild, but I think when you look through the kaleidoscope lens, of we want to get new players into the game and make the game easier for new players. I think that in that sense, I want to repeat, in that sense, in that aspect, you could bring back something like Victory Dragon off the ban list. Now, I know what you're thinking, Avery, you're out of your damn mind. Like, this is a match-winning card. It's toxic. If someone goes to attack with it, then the opponent can just scoop and go to the next game. There's so many things around that. But... In regards to making the game easier, couldn't we argue that that, at least in concept, makes the game easier to play? Because, you know, any new little Timmy or Johnny, what the hell ever, join the IRL game instead of just playing on Master Shits, which is garbage anyway. We've beaten that horse to death. They just play out Victory Dragon to win the whole match instead of having to play another game. I'm not saying Victory Dragon should come back. It's just these are the type of things I've been thinking about that I also worry that Konami may do to try and get new users into the game and then it just ends up backfiring. Now, I say that along with bringing back things like Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed, old cards like that, because, you know, people from back in the day played with these cards when they were kids. Maybe that gets them back into the IRL game. Something that is true across all card games, minus Uno, obviously, is that drawing cards is fun. No matter what card game you're playing, drawing cards, searching cards is fun. You know, I mean, shit, people were playing three Upstart Goblin, one, because it was a three-card deck thinner, and two, because it was just fun to draw cards. You know, one day of peace, draw a card, Pot of Greed, draw two, Graceful Charity, draw three. Could we see cards like Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity come off the ban list? I don't think it's that far-fetched. Again, when you look at it through the lens of trying to get new users into the game. Now, trying to make the game less complicated. Could Konami actually print cards to make the game less complicated? No. They shot themselves in the foot years and years ago when they started putting in new summoning mechanics. A lot of people are so, uh, I was going to say diverse, but so many people disagree about when Yu-Gi-Oh! became complicated. I've seen people say that Synchros ruined the game and, you know, Exceeds ruined the game, Pendulums, whatever. And I think that it was really Pendulums for a time, excuse me, that uh, made Yu-Gi-Oh! completely complicated and just not what it used to be. You know, we used to have the scales be their own zones instead of in the spell and trap zone. You had Pendulum decks be able to abuse that so hard, basically having not just five back row, but then also their two scale zones to be able to Pendulum summon and, and all that stuff. And so I feel like instead of Konami trying to make a new summoning mechanic, or a new master rule to try and reel those things in, I think that they're going to move towards a different idea, possibly uh, what I'm gonna say here in a second, but the point that I wanna make with that is that I think that they already tested that 
when they did the Master Rule revision or Master Rule 4 rather, where they said, okay, any monster summoned from the extra deck has to go to the extra monster zone. Also, here's a new summoning mechanic in the form of Link Monsters. So they tried to make the game slower, more simplified, but then we got Link Monsters anyway. So it kind of didn't really do anything and it pissed more people off than it helped because everybody's like, well, I can't play my old decks now. You know, I always tell the story about when Link Monsters first came out and I was playing uh, Zodiac and I went to this uh, local card shop that I had at the time right near my house and uh, there was this dude who's like, yeah, I just play for fun. I just play for fun. I just play for fun. Like he's talking all this stuff and I'm talking about meta and he goes, yeah, like I said, I just play for fun. And then I start whooping his ass with Tier Zero Zodiac and he didn't want to play by the new rules with, you know, monsters have to go in the extra monster zone and whatever. And it, it was just hilarious. Oh, no, I wasn't even playing uh, Zodiac. I was playing Stun because I remember I banished the Radiance and stuff. And so when I asked the judge there, he said, yeah, we're going by the new rules. And he was pissed. And I'm like, well, you know, you said you just play for fun, Sugar Boo Bear. It was really, really funny. Um, so that hurt a lot of people, though, in that sense, because then they couldn't play all their synchro based decks and stuff. Uh, but now moving on to the point that I was going to say is that I feel like Konami, if they want to make the game simpler for new users... And again, I'm not saying that these are things that they should do. I want to reiterate that, especially since your boy mentioned Victory Dragon. And I don't want to lose any subscribers. But what if we saw Konami implement, even if it was just for a time, set rotation? Now, I know what you're thinking. Avery, most other card games have set rotation. That's what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! great. You can play cards from 2002 in your 2023 deck. I think that that's really cool. The problem inherently with that is that any new player, little Tommy, little Susie, whatever, you know, if they're like 10 years old and obviously they weren't around in 2002, they weren't even born yet. So they're not going to know that certain cards exist. Maybe Konami says, okay, let's cut this off at the head. Let's eliminate a bunch of these cards so that, you know, new players don't feel like they got to learn all these old cards and then just have these sets that they can play with. Number one pushes new product because then you're, you can only play with certain sets. And number two, it forces people to play new decks. Now, again, I feel that this runs into the issue of people want to play their old stuff in competitive. You know, that that's why like giving retro support to older cards or decks is really loved on in the community and is also inherently a way to get new people into the game. You know, if you've got a little Johnny or whatever who played Volcanics back in the day, now they're a big Johnny, I guess. Uh, but, you know, they played Volcanics years ago and then they see we're getting new Volcanic support. They're going to dust off their Volcanic cards, go to a tournament, get the new Volcanic cards and play with their new Volcanic deck. Having retro support and even remaking retro cards into like different effects is really cool. You know, look at Triple Tactics Talent. That's three effects on, well, I guess now only two banned cards because Change of Heart is unbanned. But like you have the draw two effect from Pot of Greed on there. You can look at the opponent's hand like a Forceful Sentry effect on it. It's really cool in that regard, being able to see old card effects like Pot of Greed, Delinquent Duo, whatever, in new card effects in a more balanced way. And so by implementing any sort of set rotation, you end up kind of cutting yourself at the, the knees, so to speak, or even the head, like I said before, where you're not really able to do retro support for those older decks or cards because you said that these cannot be played in competitive play. You know, what if like all the times that Hungry Burger was ever printed, you couldn't use the sets that it was printed in. So that would mean that you couldn't use any of the new novellas cards. So it defeats the whole purpose, in my opinion. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. How could Konami make Yu-Gi-Oh! simpler for new players? Again, not for like the veteran. You know, we, we veterans, we know how the game functions. Sorry about that, you guys. I just lost my voice while trying to record. But let me know what you think down in the comments about all this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. I guess I'm still trying to get better.